Hey everyone, welcome back to Delta Lima's Table Talk. Today, I'm going to be discussing my range belt, my gun belt, my shit hits the fan belt, my whatever you want to call it belt with all of your equipment, Batman belt, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be discussing my setup and particular reasons why I have certain things set up in the manner that I do. So, here we go. First and foremost, the belt itself is a gray ghost gear i don't know if it's their ranger green i don't know if it's their foliage green but i know it's their green version of their uh, molly belt once again that is a gray ghost gear belt uh, bear with me for one moment it does have the inner and outer belt system so it is the two belt system essentially please disregard these three pieces of black electrical tape uh, these are intentionally taped over the uh, loops for the suspenders the loops for the suspenders i generally do not have a purpose for that uh, i remember when i was in the military we had uh L we were issued lbe's load bearing equipment and for the most part um those were primarily used to help you sustain or distribute the weight, weight distribution if you were carrying a heavier load. This inner belt does have that feature. However, I have purposely and intentionally taped over those loops as it makes it a little bit more difficult in order to weave this inner belt through the belt loops of my pants. Um, but long story made short, yes, uh, this would be your inner belt. You would pretty much just weave this through your belt loops. And once it's weaved through your belt loops, you would take this part right here and feed it through that uh, loop right there. Once it's fed through, you would adjust the circumference of the inner belts to accommodate your waist. I do have a 32, 34 waist. So yeah, I kind of small about our long story made short. This uh, is a hoop, 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 hook and loop setup. So this part right here would be the female version of the Velcro and the belt itself with all the Molly and all the Batman gear and everything on it would uh, marry up to your belt just like that. And you would cinch the Velcro all the way around Use the cobra buckle and essentially your belt would be ready to go. Um, but for the most part, bear with me again. You do not always have to weave this through your inner, through your belt loops or your pants. You can honestly use these as like the old war belts that were issued to military service members years, years, years ago when war belts first became very popular. Um, you could just honestly just leave this inner belt as is and throw this over whatever garments, clothing you may be wearing at that time and still use it as the same. It's not going to serve this. It's not going to have the same rigidity or stability that it would if you were to use it with the inner and outer belt through your pant loop or your belt loops on your pair of pants. But essentially, it'll still do the job. All right. So 
now that we discussed the uh, belt itself, the Grey Ghost belt, um, on my I am a righty. So on my right hand side, I at my three o'clock position, I will have my Safari Land holster to hold my Glock 19. The holster itself is a 7376 RDS. Um, it does have some retention. So that way, if I were to just holster it, just like that, that click, it's secure. It's not going nowhere. Um, I have one of these types of holsters for every pistol configuration that I do have or handgun configuration that I do have. So that way, in the event that I'm out at the range and I'm like, you know what? I want to use my Gen 5 Glock 19. Use that for a while. Uh, holster, reholster, holster, reholster, practice doing those types of drills and train in that manner. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to use my Gen 4 Glock 19. I have a holster for that. So that way I can easily transition holsters without having to we re re weave my um, uh, belt mount for my holster itself back onto the belt because that can be cumbersome after a while and take up valuable time that you could be used to be training at the range whereas compared to now you're fidgeting with your gear which is something you should have done in preparation in order to be ready for the range long story made short with these uh, forks right here the male version or the male end will simply go into the female part and it's not going nowhere but um there are other manufacturers out there that have this same setup i think true north concepts is one um their products are a little bit more pricier um and um i've never tried it personally but looking at the product and you know holding the product at some of my local gun stores the mount or the belt loop itself the frame for it is metal, so it's it's rigid, so is this rigid as well. But I find that having this curvature in this uh, belt mount loop, I find having that curvature goes right along my thigh and my hip relatively well to the point that I don't even feel a need to have um, a belt leg thigh strap. I don't even have one of those on this setup. Not just because it's another thing that I have to attach to my body and make sure that it's secure, but I don't have a problem when I go to grab my handgun, which is in the holster. I don't have a problem with pulling it straight up and, you know, using it. Um, I've seen a lot of people that do have that. And there's a lot of reputable people that train in that manner. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. However, the thing is, the thing is they get out and train. I get out and train. I don't feel the necessary need to have that addition to my holster and my kit. So I don't use it. But like I said, other people do. So that suits them and fits them fine. Good on them. Good on me. Um, next one, I do have a trauma kit, first aid kit, boo-boo kit, um, whatever you want to call it. But this is a little bit more extensive and a little bit more uh, detailed in regards to the items that I have in here but it is a knockoff of the London Bridge Trading Trauma Kit. Manufacturer is IDO Gear, I-D-O-G-E-A-R, Amazon exclusive. Um, it works well for me though in all honesty I haven't had very many problems with it. Um, it holds my first aid and trauma kit items that I need should I need it not saying that I've had to use it I have had some training with the contents that I keep in here um, but I haven't had extensive training as what an EMT or what a, a, a surgeon or a nurse would have but this pouch right here works in the same manner underneath this uh, elastic material right here you have this pull tab 
you would grab this pull tab and pull the pull tabs free and clear now of course when i go to shake it on camera it wouldn't come out but anyways i have some triangular bandages here i have some hemorrhage hemorrhage control bandages for big big um injuries i do have some more uh, trauma dressing bandages i do have uh and, and this is the roll too that you would use in order to stuff into the wound and then wrap it um, i do have some gauze pads i have six gauze pads in here and i have a chest seal um Pretty much all this stuff right here I got off of Amazon. Granted, a lot of these items here are not an extensive, full, in-depth trauma first aid kit. But the items that I have in here I feel are adequate enough in order for me to stop, stop the bleeding in order for a trained and licensed professional to arrive and assist me or god forbid anybody else that might have an injury of this nature where you would have to use all of these items um like i said though but for the most part i do have other items that i would have with me especially if i'm out on the range i do have other items that i would use on my plate carrier or in my first aid kit that's staged in my suv but for the most part this is just uh, a, a little piece of the bigger piece of the entire puzzle that i would use in order to adequately stop some form of massive bleeding all right um after my trauma kit i do have a three row or column don't don't remember which one's which nor do i care for the most part, um, for the most part, I do have three rows, columns, as I mentioned, that are free and clear. That would generally be the center of my back right here. I generally keep this area clear as I do not like any items in the small of my back. Um, if you slip, trip, fall, you can easily... Uh, fall on the small of your back and injure your back to a point where it's going to be for the rest of your life or it can be pretty severe. Long story made short, me personally, I don't like anything in the small of my back. Also, too, if I were to have to hurry up and get inside of a vehicle, I don't want to have anything right there in the center of my back pretty much just pushing me forward. When I'm wearing this belt, um, this part right here, it would be the small of my back. So therefore, this would be my above my left uh, butt cheek. This would be above my right butt cheek. This would be about the uh, 4 o'clock position. This would be about the 7 o'clock position. Because as it's wrapped around you like that, it just created that opening. I generally, like I said, keep that area of my belt purposely open for those reasons but after my trauma kit i do have um the next four pouches are going to be by 511 i do have a thing for 511 i don't know why not a lot of other people like 511 or talk about 511 the only thing i really don't like about 511 is their tac tech plate carrier i'm just not a fan of that but it, it, if, it, if it works for you, you do you. But for the most part, um, these next four pouches are by 511. This is their dump pouch. I forget exactly what they call it. But it does have uh, pretty much like a square part up here with two rows of molly. So that way you can molly whatever item it is that you feel necessary to the top part of your dump pouch. I like that um, 
availability simply because like I mentioned earlier, I'm a 32, 34 inch waistline dude. I do not have a lot of real estate on my belt as much as somebody else who would have a larger waist. I only have a specific length or of space on my belt in order for me to put things. And I do not want every bit of my belt taken up by some type of item. So when I saw this, um, dump pouch i was like hey that's 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 kind of nice i like that that way i could honestly just attach another item on top of my dump pouch and still be able to effectively use it cool anyways long story made short like i said this is their 511 dump pouch um it does only have one zipper but it it's it's pretty solid zipper you unzip it Inside that bag or part right there, you actually have the dump pouch itself. Um, I, every one of my belts, every one of my belts is pretty much in the same configuration from left to right or right to left. Excuse me. But um, for the most part, every one of my belts is set up in the same way. Um, I like having a dump pouch on every one of my belts. So that way, when you're out there at, at the range, um, hot summer day, you can just jump, uh, throw a bottle of ice cold water in here. Or whenever you're doing some type of drills, if you have an expended magazine, you can easily take that expended magazine, put it in your dump pouch, along with maybe one of your expended 556 five, mags. Um, you got some Skittles in there, you got some Starburst, uh, your private pile, you wanna hide you know, a donut in there from Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. The world is yours. Put whatever you want in there. Just make sure that you train with it, okay? Make sure you know that it's there, so that way you're not just dropping everything on the, out at the range, and then all your high-speed Gucci gear your friends see and it's like, oh, wait, Delta dropped that. Let me go pick that up. And essentially, use your gear, train with your gear, know your gear. Um, I like this 511 dump pouch. It does have a little tab up here at the very top. So that way I could easily secure the uh, uh, flap of the pouch. So that way my contents would not fall out in the event that I'm doing some type of drill that involves running. Everything's jiggling. Um, pretty sure that'll be a meme somewhere, some way. But uh, for the most part, it can secure your pouch. Um, but whenever you're not using your pouch, you can simply just fold it in half lengthwise, fold it again on itself, and then roll it up like a burrito. And after you roll it up, store it back in its uh, little compartment and zip it back up so that way it's out of the way. It doesn't get caught on anything else for that manner. But for the most part, I like this dump pouch because it has that versatility, as I previously mentioned, which does allow me to have a tourniquet holder mounted on the top part of the dump pouch um i do keep a turn it i keep probably when i'm out at the range training this uh this that and the other for all of my belts i have a tourniquet for each one of my belts and i have a tourniquet for each one of my plate carriers so and in multiple other bags my edc bag that i carry around with me back and forth to work every day. I have like two tourniquets in there, but for the most part, you have four limbs. You should have at least probably two tourniquets at most. I mean, at, at minimum. Two is one, one is none. If you use one, odds are you're probably gonna have to use another one. But also two, make sure you stage your tourniquets so that way whenever you do need to use it, it's readily available. Um, but for the most part, um, yeah, that's my tourniquet and my dump pouch. 
after that, um, heading back around towards my weak or dom uh, weak side, I have a 511 flashlight pouch. Now, yes, Delta, you have a flashlight on your weapon. You have a weapon mounted flashlight. Yes, true. But there will be times where I do not want to use my firearm weapon mounted light in order to identify a particular subject or threat. Well, if, it, if it's the threat, yeah, use your firearm. But there may be times where you don't necessarily want to draw your firearm and use it to identify a subject. Um, that's where having a handheld flashlight can come in handy. All right. So for the most part, have you, in my opinion, have you a handheld flashlight for times where you don't want to use your weapon mounted light in order to ID a particular subject? Yes, there are, you know, scenarios where you can use your weapon mounted light and not even point it. Let's just pretend that you were something that I needed to identify. I don't always have to point the weapon mounted light or the firearm at you. I can simply just hold it up to the ceiling. And with today's weapon mounted lights, they will go up and flood to illuminate the general area. Sometimes I don't necessarily feel that that would be a viable um, option in order to draw your firearm in order to identify a particular subject. Therefore, that's why I always have some form of handheld flashlight in conjunction on every one of my belts. So this is just a simple crimson trace um, light. I don't know the make or the model. Please forgive me. But they sell them at Academy and they take two CR123 batteries. It's pretty bright little flashlight when you have fresh batteries in there. Um, so for the most part, uh, like I said, having, in my opinion, having a handheld flashlight is a very worthy tool on your Batman belt. All right. Um, after my flashlight, I have one, five, five, six mag, one, five, five, six mag on my plate carrier. I would use more. Or I would ha have more 556 five, mags on my plate carrier. But for my speed reloads coming from my belt, I only prefer to have one magazine pouch. Um, my indexing on my magazine pouches, I always like to have the rounds facing backwards. So that way, whenever I beer can grip my magazine, as such, all I do is rotate it and feed Crystal or feed Huckleberry or feed Doc. Notice each one of those names was one of the names for one of my ARs. But long story made short, I use the beer can grip whenever I'm feeding one of my firearms. So orientate your, round, your magazines in a manner that works for you. And then go out and train. Go out and figure out what needs to be rectified, address it, resolve it, and move forward. Uh, but keep training, no matter what. Get out there and keep training. This 5.56 AR-15 uh, magazine pouch, it does have a Kydex insert woven into the pouch itself, um, which helps with retention. I don't feel a necessary need since I'm not like a Navy SEAL, Green Beret, or Delta Force Operator, Marine Recon. I'm not any of those entities or high-speed dudes. Shout out to all of y'all. Y'all keep doing what you're doing, holding it down, you know, doing your jobs. We support you. But uh, for the most part, I'm not jumping out of helos. I'm not doing uh, water infiltration through submarines to the point that I need more retention on my magazines. I'm just doing flat ground training out at the range 
And if worst case scenario, this belt does need to be used to defend my home, my property, or my family, I feel comfortable with having just this form of retention. All right. It does have that Kydex insert woven into the uh, fabric, the material itself in order to retain the magazine. Um, but after my 556 five, mag, I do have two 511. Uh, like I said, I do not know the name or the model. Uh, or the nomenclature of these pistol mags, but they are 511. They do have Velcro, so that way you can have open top flaps just like that. Or if you want to take this um, Velcro right here and secure it through the backside, just like that. Now the thing is you're going to have this little pull tab, which would be beneficial. So that way you could grab that pull tab. If you chose to secure your magazines with the pull tab, you would just grab that pull and reload um, your firearm. But for the most part on my Glock or my handgun mags, I keep my rounds facing forward just like that. So that way, whenever I am grabbing my magazine to reload, I grab it just like that. Very similar to what I use on the beer can grip for my AR. But then I would be able to insert it into my handgun just like that. So like I said, figure out what method to orientate your magazines on your belt um, figure out what works for you or figure out why you want it that way and then go out and train. Uh, talk to other people that's out at the range, you know, ask them, hey, I see you do certain thing this way. Can you explain or give me reasons why? Don't be hesitant to ask, you know, questions to other people that's out there. Get out there, have fun and meet new people that share the same interest as you. So that way we can just build a stronger and better community with one another but um yeah for the most part that is my gray ghost gear batman belt setup but figure out what works for you don't just mimic or replicate something that you saw online or you saw on a movie god please don't do it that way don't don't replicate whatever you saw in the movie what i'm trying to say is get out and train go practice figure out what works for you this can honestly save your life one day. And the last thing you want to do is realize that you wish you added it, but you didn't add it. So with that being said, y'all stay motivated. Keep after it.